Good afternoon, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom and my studio. Now today I'm going to show you how to paint rainbows with watercolors. It is a little challenge and uh, I've done some practicing with it and I really think the results are going to come out. The, the photograph you saw and I'll bring it back. Uh, this is the, I'll give you a sample. This is the painting that will be, uh, that I'll be demonstrating today. And uh, so I'll show you the stages I go through, I'll show you the colors I use, and I'll also give you a little background on rainbows. Uh, everybody thinks they know rainbows, but maybe there's some things you, you can learn and uh, I can show you how I did it. So let's, uh, let me put on some information here for just a second. I'm going to put on a little slideshow with uh, the, this presentation today is a uh, phone watercolors, but uh, I, I decided to talk about how to paint a rainbow using watercolors. And first of all, a definition: what is a rainbow? Well, I've highlighted here the, the key words. It's an arc, which is mean a circular shape of specular colors. And it's in the sky opposite the sun, and it's a result of a reflection of the, of the raindrops and the mist in the sky. Right after a storm, or after a rainstorm, uh, you'll see the sun shining up into the sky, and then you see the rainbow. Also, another factor about a rainbow is the sky is lighter inside the rainbow. And I'll show you a couple of pictures here. The reason it's lighter is that uh, you, we get a reflected light back to our eyes from the rainbow that makes it look lighter inside the rainbow. Now here's the light spectrum of a rainbow. Now everybody probably uh, when they were growing up understood uh, Roy G. Biv, how to remember the number of seven colors in the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. But there's also a difference in the, in the wavelengths and also the, the uh, bands. Look here, the, the red and then you have yellow. Yellow goes into green. There's orange in between the red and the yellow. Not very much. And there's a large span of green. And then the green goes into the blue. Then blue goes into the indigo and then finally to violet. Now here's a couple of photographs of rainbows. Here's some beautiful scenery here. This first one here is in South America. Uh, and you can see the rainbow arc across the mountain range here. And because of the, uh, of the storm or the rainstorm behind, uh, the reflection of the sun onto those, that raindrops creates that rainbow. And look at the colors. It goes from that red into the orange, yellow, the blue, the greens, the blues, and the the darker blue and then the purple. Now this second one here is another just a small arc showing here and this is after a rainstorm and you see the reflection on the on the ground at this airport and the water here and you can see the reflection here on the, on the surface of the water. And you can, here's a good example of the lighter the lighter value on the inside of the rainbow versus the darker side outside the rainbow. But it's still the same colors all the way through. And notice also that they're also blending and there's no real distinct band between. So that's where watercolor gives an advantage because I can blend those colors to give the very almost the same look as this rainbow. And the third example here is a per, almost a perfect arc of the sun. This is, the, this is a picture of a, a scene in Puerto Rico and the beam, of the beam of the sun is hitting the, the raindrops in the sky, creating the arc of the rainbow. A beautiful, beautiful scene. That would make a nice painting. Okay, so I'm going to take you today on a, a, 
a version of my uh, interpretation of how I do a, a painting. But let me show you a couple more things I want to show you uh, before we do that. But quickly, let's go to my close-up camera. You can also make a rainbow without water. This is a this is a CD disc, which uh, they're not they don't use them very often anymore, but they're still around. But you have you have a light shining on this disc, and you can see the spectrum of the colors. You can see the yellows, the reds, the oranges, yellows, the greens, the blues, okay, and the dark blue. Also, uh, uh, a water glass and also a prism. If, if you had a prism to look at, you could also get to capture the colors of the rainbow. So that's the spectrum of light from red all the way through violet. Now I'll take you over to my painting board. Uh, in parallel with that, the, the artist color wheel, the artist color wheel is also organized the same way. If you start with red over here at the nine o'clock position and go around, you got red, and then you got the orange, then the yellow, then the green, and the blue, down to the darker blue, and then the violet. So it's the same exact setup of the rainbow. The organization of colors. So I can imagine uh, whoever designed the color wheel probably was looking at the rainbow when they saw this spectrum of light. Now what I've done here is an example. This is an example of what I did with watercolor. This is watercolor that I did to interpret the rainbow. And this is the red, the orange, yellow, into the green, into the blue, and the darker blue, and then into the violet. Those are the colors. You see how watercolor blends? So that's why watercolor is a very good medium to use for uh, painting rainbows. Number one, it's transparent. You can almost see through it. And it's very watery, which means it blends very nicely on a piece of white paper. So this would be a good example of what watercolor can do for a rainbow. And you ought to try that. It's a lot of fun to get your colors out and then try to go from a transition from, from red all the way through the colors, all the way through the violet. They're very, they're very, just like around the color wheel. Over here on my palette, I've got my colors ready to go. Uh, I've got the yellow lemon, which is my yellow I'm gonna use. Uh, next to that I have yellow orange and next I have pyro red and over here I have cobalt blue and I have now indigo is a really dark blue I'm, I'm using uh, royal blue for the for the dark indigo color dark blue and then finally the violet is the quinacridone violet and let's not forget I forgot one color didn't I which color did I forget green green number one down here a light green I've got that accounted for okay Wash out my brush because I've been mixing the paints here. So I'm gonna what I uh, also let me show you. I've got a design that I did for this rainbow plan. Uh, let me move this aside. So I'm gonna do a small painting today with a rainbow. Let me show you my design. Uh, I have a little landscape here. This is this is the ground. I have a, this is a large tree, I have a, little, a smaller tree over here, and this is the sky, and I have the rainbow arc coming down this way. So that's going to be my, that's going to be my painting plan, okay? 
And also I've indicated here also the values that I'm going to use. This is going to be a light color. This will be a medium. This will be a dark area. This will be dark here. And this will be a medium dark on the side over here. Now remember the sky, of course the rainbow colors will be here, but up here I'm going to have a, a darker area. I'm probably going to use a little bit of blue here, <clears throat> a blue sky. Excuse me, let me take a drink of water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember this uh, this will be a little bit darker on this side because the outside of the rainbow. On the inside, it'll be slightly lighter, a little lighter down here. So this will probably be a, a, a medium gray and then a, a lighter gray down here. Mm. I said blue, but it'll be like a bluish gray and then a light bluish gray down here. Okay, so this is my painting plan. This is my sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring over my paper. So I've transferred that sketch to this uh, little little sheet of, it's about 8 by 10 sheet of uh, uh, watercolor paper, Gemini, uh, 140 pound, archival watercolor paper. Okay, and I've got my design already drawn on the paper, so I'm going to go ahead and start painting. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use a, uh, a half inch natural airbrush, flat. I'm going to paint in the rainbow. I need a couple more tools. I'm going to use another. This is a half inch brush or half inch natural hair brush with just water in it. And also I'm going to have uh, an extra sheet of paper to test out the colors before I put them down. So my brushes, my paints, the paper, the test sheet, I'm ready to go. First thing I do is I wet the uh, clean brush, the three and I'm going to put I'm going to put water in the area of the rainbow. So I'm going to wet that path of light. Now that makes that gives me a nice wet watery path because remember, watercolor blends very nicely and it blends even better when it's wet. And I'm going to start out with red on the outside. Now the, the intensity of the color, you don't want it too bright. So I'm testing out the intensity now, making sure it's not too much paint on there. But remember I also have wet paper, so what I have here is also going to be watered down when I put it on the paper. So I think what I'll do is I'll turn it so I have a better angle and I'm going to paint in an arc. Okay, the next color I'm going to pick up is orange yellow orange. In this case the paint is called yellow orange but it's an orange color. And again I don't want it too dark. But remember I have I have water also on the paper. So then the next the next one I put down now is I'm going to over overlap that a little bit so that the yellow I mean the orange and the red blend together. If you remember that picture on the spectrum, remember the uh, orange and yellow has a much broader area than the rest of the colors. The rest are just very narrow bands or bands of color. So the orange and the yellow really have the majority of the color. Now that I'm going to overlap this also. This is yellow, yellow lemon. Now the next, the next color, remember the, uh, the color of the rainbow, the next color will be green. And also from the, uh, from the color wheel, 
The next color in line is green. I'll test that one out. And also overlap that. After green will come blue, a little bit of cobalt blue. So this is a good way to uh, uh, know where your colors are in your palette and also be able to identify them. Also where they're located, not too dark. So next to that green will come the blue. And then I have this royal blue, which is pretty close to indigo. I mean, it's a real dark, very dark blue. But we don't want to make it as dark as that is. We want to have a little bit lighter. And the last color is violet. So Konakadam violet is the color I'm going to use, the paint I'm going to use to symbolize that. And I want it to be a, a lighter value. So I test it on my test sheet. Oh, isn't that pretty? I love that. It's, that violet is so such a beautiful color. Okay, I managed to keep the arc. Managed to keep the arc. Now, you'll notice. Now, what I'm going to do? Well, and let that. It's going to dry a little bit, but it'll still be wet enough for me to work on it. Uh, also, I'm going to mix up some grays. The. Uh, I'm going to use that cobalt blue color up here I got in the corner and mix I have more space to cover so I need to make a little bit larger area here and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, burnt sienna in with that to make it a gray so my mixture there is cobalt blue and burnt sienna And I'll add some more water to that to uh, make sure I get... Now, I'm going to go over to my my test sheet. So the color out here is going to be slightly darker out here. So I'll start out with this value here, then I, when I want to go lighter, I just add water to the mix to lighten it up. So I'll start out with this value. So my plan here is to go ahead and put the, the gray sky in, because that's, remember, it's a, it's a rainy day. You have to have, in order to have a rainbow, you have to have rain, and then you have to have the sun. Those two, those two elements together make the rainbow, the water and the, and the light. Now what I'm going to do now is take that color now, I'm going to come right up on top of this, overlap this red just slightly, and what that will do, that will loosen that edge up, which is what I want. I want that edge to blend in with the sky. Okay, now on the other side, on the inside, I'm going to be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to add a little bit of water to that mix. Test it out. Make sure it's lighter. There's a darker, there's a lighter. Now I'm going to work on the inside. Let me turn the paper a little bit so I can get a better brush stroke.
me see what I did. And I'm also going to overlap this uh, violet a little bit because I want the edge to be s smoother. Don't want to have a sharp edge. I want to have a. I want to have a smooth edge, an edge that vanishes into the sky. And this side of this inside of the rainbow is a little lighter because of that reflection we're getting back from the light. Okay. Now, while we're here, what I want to do though is I want to uh, some of the colors are getting a little faded, so what I'll do, what I'll do here, is I will pick up some more color. This is what you have to do now in watercolor. You have to make a little adjustment. So I'm gonna make a while well, it's still wet. I'm gonna put just a little color in here. Just a, no, that's really heavy. Much lighter than that. Okay. Bring out that color a little bit. So I'm re re-wetting that area with that uh, that red color and now I'm going to pick up the yellow lemon yellow and go back in and put that in there and that's creating a fuzzy edge is what I want I want a fuzzy edge and next to the yellow goes the green so I'm re I'm re adding I'm adding the paint back on top again. That'll keep the edges fuzzy fuzzy. And then a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, cobalt blue. And I'm going to skip the. Uh, the darker blue, I don't need that right now. I just want to get the, the impression here, so I'm going to use the, the, the violet, the Conocrum violet, as a last color. Hmm. Now, also, uh, you recall that watercolor, when it dries, will dry a, a lot lighter. So it looks a little, because it's really wet now, uh, it will it'll lighten up as it, uh, as it dries, okay? All right, while it's drying a little bit, um, yeah, let me let me also put some go put some more of that sky color back in. A little blue gray. inside just a little bit just a little bit on the inside I got that little hint of blue which is uh, you know the blue sky is there but it's uh, it's dulled down because it's raining Okay, now I'm going to mix up a little darker mix here. I'm going to take this uh, Hooker's Green, mix it in with the, the dark blue, royal blue. And I'm going to start putting in some trees over here. And of course these trees are in shadow, so they're going to be dark, much darker. And I'm not going to put it on the edge yet because the edge is still too wet. So I'm going to just go ahead and put in some color here. Then I'll go back and clean up the edges. But I want to get the uh, color started here.
Now my my plan here was to go uh, light, medium, and dark on the on the ground here. So let me start with a little bit of a uh, little bit of green, and because it's the ground, I'm going to mix I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, a little bit of brown in with that to kind of give it a, a ground a ground texture look. And I'll darken that up a little bit. Yeah. As I come, <clears throat> as I come forward, I may mix a little bit of lighter value in here, a little bit of light. And then in the foreground, I'll go back to making it a little darker. I'm just blocking in these colors. I'll, I'll we'll work on the edges as soon as it gets a little drier. Just blocking in the colors. Here, I'm going to make this a medium with a little dark in it, but I'm going to put the medium value down first and then put the darker value on top of that. Just trying to stay away, away from the wet paper. Okay, so uh, I'm going to, uh, I don't want to touch those edges yet. I'll come back and make a few more brush strokes there, but I want to go ahead and put the dryer, the hair dryer on to dry out some of that paint. So I'm going to turn the dryer on. If it's too noisy, just turn your volume down. back now and uh, finish up the edges of this tree very quickly uh, add a little more a little more green and a little more brown mixed in with that dark blue okay now work on the working on the edges just give the uh, idea of a of the tree limbs leaves uh, of the tree here. This is a dark tree in shadow. Uh, leaving some whites here to show the sky peeking through a little bit. And come down here. Change brush, it's a smaller brush here. Uh, the section up here, I'm going to define it's like a small hill, so I'm going to define that edge a little better, make it a little darker at the top. And then as I come down, As I come down, I'll get a little bit lighter.
Now I'll take the tissue and I'm just going to uh, blot it just a little bit. That gives it a little texture look. And also it picks up a little bit of that paint. Just a little bit. Give it a little texture. And also give it a little less intensity up there. I want this uh, I want this hill here to be darker right here. The one in the in the section here. The background is further away so it's a little bit lighter. And then the foreground will be dark. Make the foreground darker makes the uh, background look a little bit further away. More definition in the foreground. Okay, this tree here is a uh, real Maybe it's a little, little evergreen tree. And the, the rainbow kind of goes in behind that. So that'll kind of uh, bring that little section together. Making sure all my edges are little. You don't want to have a rounded, you so I want little ins and outs. This one goes out, this one comes in, this one goes out. So it gives a little variety of the edge. The same way over here. Okay. I think what I'll do uh, is I'm going to take this brush with just water in it. Take this brush here, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this rainbow, and I'm going to pull out, not pull it out, but I'm going to put a little water here, maybe lighten some of this color up just slightly. And it'll also pull some of those colors together. What I'm doing is I'm blending them, smoothing out the edges with just water on the brush. And also lighten it up just a little bit, so that it uh, becomes more of a transparent look. Even though you see the bright colors, it's more transparent uh, in the sky. Then what I'll do is go ahead and continue on with that wet water, uh, as, as, so it doesn't make a blossom. I continue on with that wet water on out across the whole painting. So that I have the same equal amount of moisture across the painting, so I don't have any uh, lines or marks from the brush. That's one thing uh, uh, that you learn to keep things smooth is to keep the amount of water on the painting about the same. In other words, it won't it won't dry and dry in spots. Okay, I think that, that turned. I think that's coming along pretty good now. I like that. Yeah, it's still a pretty bright uh, rainbow, and some of the rainbows are brighter than others. Let me put the uh, let me put the dryer on for another another minute. All right, back on the dryer. I'll take one more, a little bit of look on all these trees, just a little bit. We'll look at these trees one more time. Let me go add a little more color over here uh, to make that tree like it's, the tree is darker than the rainbow, so I want it to come forward, so I guess it has to be darker here. 
So whatever color it is, if it's green or blue or brown or whatever, you just add more pigment to it to bring it out and also to bring it forward of the of that other color. That's working good. And up here, I think we've got it. Okay. All right, let's take a look at that under the mat. I always check my paintings with a mat board. I put a mat board around it uh, to take a look at it. Wow. Well, you can see here uh, a couple pointers. Uh, I wet the sky here where the rainbow is first. I wet it with the with a brush with just water in it, and then I started adding the paint. Uh, all the colors there are seven different colors from from uh, red to orange to yellow to green to blue and then the purple. Okay, then I put the sky in. I kept this area a little bit darker color out here, a little darker gray, and then a lighter gray inside. Okay, then the landscape was just to set it off with. Uh, a little more interest in the in the painting. Make it a, make it a small painting. Okay. All right. Uh, let me show you another one I did earlier. They're be almost the same. Almost the same. But let me show you another ver not the same version, but the same painting. Uh, I did another one earlier. And uh, okay, this is more of my practice one. And uh, the color is a little bit lighter. Which is, you know, it's it's up to, uh, you know, it's up to the artist how. Dark. I don't think they have to be dark. I don't think they have to be very light. But they, sometimes the the, uh, the rainbow can disappear into the sky as part of as part of the atmosphere. Depends on how much light is hitting that particular part of the sky at that time. So uh, it's really up to interpretation. Oh, I had a hard time finding uh, paintings that had rainbows in that I could follow. So this came up as my own design. Uh, the practice here uh, was I came up with my own technique of adding the color on top of the wet water first to make them uh, watery looking and also blending the colors uh, more like a watercolor. And then uh, I think it worked out really nice. I think uh, I just found another technique that can be used in the sky, especially for this sort of a painting. So let me come back. Let me come back to the main camera. So I uh, I had a little bit of fun today. I hope this is a fun of watercolors, and I decided to go ahead and uh, paint a rainbow. And uh, <laughs> I painted some rainbows in a lot of other different ways, and most of them are. Are pretty basic and, and and not not as technical as this one. This is more of a technical rainbow using rain color and to give it more of a realistic atmosphere. But uh, uh, I think it turned out real good. I really I think the the rainbow came down. The one I painted. That's the one I just painted a little bit darker, a little bit darker colors. Uh, but the effect is still the same. The effect is still it's got. It's got a, a soft edges, and then the the sky is changed from a darker to a lighter area inside the rainbow. So I think I captured the essence of a rainbow. So I'm glad you joined me today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the the uh, rainbow uh, exercise. And you want to try that yourself. I'd like to see some output, some outcome. And the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, let me put my uh, close-up camera here. Uh, on the replay, you can go to uh, www. Everest, that's my website, everestwatercolors.com, and there you can do the replay and look the uh, look at the video over again. Uh, let me <laughs> let me turn uh, let me turn on the camera. Correct. Get the I got the camera wrong. Uh, Go to Everett's Watercolors, www.everettswatercolors.com. That's my website. And there you can look at the replay and uh, look at it again, stop and start it, and then try the painting yourself. Also, I have a Facebook group, Fun with Watercolors, which is at uh, facebook.com, fb.com, Facebook, slash Everett's Watercolors, slash Fun with Watercolors. And that's a watercolor group I have on Facebook. And what we do there is uh, we we post paintings that I've done here live, or paintings I have for paint along, 
and then we put them there in that on that particular uh, Facebook page. So if you do one, go ahead and share it with us. Put it on there and share your art. And if you have questions, go to my website and give me a question, or make a note on the the Facebook page. One way or the other, I can I can get your comments. Also, put comments down at the, at the bottom uh, of the uh, of this of this video. I'd appreciate that also. Okay. So to wind it up, uh, I'll be back on Saturday, and Saturday at 2 o'clock I'm going to do a paint along. And uh, it's going to be uh, uh, kind of a farm scene uh, with a building and some trees and a road and a background. And uh, I think you'll enjoy that. I'll have a uh, preliminary sketch that I'll have available on my website. And I'll have the link in my announcement where you can go down below the description of the, of the video announcement and in that description will be a link and that link will take you to my website which will have a downloadable sketch that you can sketch and then you can you can paint along with me now paint along you can do it in pencil you can do it with crayon you can do it with watercolor pencil or do it with your uh, paint set so and I'll have a list of supplies on on that description area also a list of supplies you need uh, in order to paint along with me so that'll be at two o'clock Saturday and uh, I hope you all join me, and we'll have some fun there also. So next week, i got some other things I may have planned to get started. I haven't thought out, out exactly what I'll do next week yet, but there will be announcements on my uh, Facebook page, and there will be announcements uh, when I make it up on the uh, YouTube page. It will come out when I have it ready. Okay, well, you all have a safe weekend, and you all take care of yourself. I hope I see you Saturday uh, for the paint along. But you all be safe and take care, and I'll see you on the next video.